Okay, I got cut off um, last time. I don't want to rush, but I'll make this video as short as possible since you've already seen me for three videos. All right, so this is what I wrote in after I was cut off and talking to myself. Instead of saying the Y hat and the X, I could just say predicted height and foot length. And then I don't need to define my variables over here. They're already in the equation. So you can write the equation either way. All right, so part D. By about how much do actual heights typically vary from values predicted by the model with x equals foot length? This is basically our sentence stem, right? Is our sentence stem for the s or for the r squared? It's our sentence stem for the s, our standard deviation of residuals. So all this is asking for is what is our S? What's our typical prediction error? So looking back at the mini tab output, I would say that our S is equal to 7.95126 centimeters. All right, the next one, what percent of variability in height is accounted for by our model, by our least squared regression line? Again, this is the sentence stem for R squared, right? What percent of the variability? I know percent is R squared. So it's basically asking, what is our R squared? So I go back and I see that my R squared is 48.6%. 48.6% in the variability in height is accounted for by our model, where X is equal to foot length in centimeters. All right. So then our last part, part five, is just summarizing everything, right? Correlation and regression lines describe only certain types of relationships, and that type is linear. Correlation and regression lines refer to lines only, linear models. Correlation, R squared, S, and regression lines are not resistant to outliers. So let's talk about what this phrase not resistant means. So if you are resistant to something, like if you're resistant to chicken pox, that means you won't get it, right? So if you're not resistant, chicken pox could affect you. You could get it. So when we say that regression lines are not resi resistant, we say they are affected. Oh my gosh. They are affected by outliers. So that's what that not resistant means. They are affected by outliers. Outliers can change them. All right. A strong association between two variables is not enough to draw conclusions about causation. So when we say strong association, we're talking about correlation, right? Correlation does not equal causation. And here's a quick example to help understand that concept. A study once found that people with two cars live longer than people who only have one car. Now this could be true, right? These things could be associated, longer life with two cars. But I mean, are there, potential reasons why that could be the case. People with two cars would probably have higher income, right? So if you have higher income, you have a whole, but you have, uh, you have better access to medical care and more resources available. You could have better access to quality food living in a higher income area. You could have discretionary income to spend on exercise. All of those things could affect the association. So I can't say that two cars will make me live longer. Two cars doesn't cause longer life, right? Okay, I apologize for the long, um, lengthy videos on this, but this was a difficult topic and I wanted to make sure that we explained it correctly. All right, we will see you in class to discuss the packet and then remember you have your review day all of your homework is due on the review day so that's five homeworks right there's a homework for each packet so all five of those homeworks are due miss king and i will be grading them while you guys are working on the free response uh, for the review day and we'll hand them back so you can use them to study for your test also remember on the review day you will be working together to do the multiple choice on the college board please be sure you so you can submit um, you will be able to submit so we can see your grades and enter them in. All right. Um, we will see you next week.